Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Greater Rose of Sharon, he is worthy to be praised. I'm just sorry. Sunday school was off the chain this morning. You, we should be praising him because of who he is, what he's done, but just because who he is, we should be blessing his name this morning. Yes. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Bless that that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We give God the glory for allowing us to make it to the house of prayer once again. Listen, we slept last night. We, the Lord woke us up to another day filled with new mercies. He allowed us to get up and have breakfast and put clothes on and make it safely all the way to the south end so we could worship God here at Greater Rose of Sharon. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask everyone if you would stand as we repeat the Great Commission together. And the reason we do this every Sunday morning this is to remind us of our charge that Christ has not given just to the disciples that were present with him, but this is to every believer all across the globe. We have a responsibility to go out and tell others about a true and living Savior. So let us begin reading Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> hey, I mean, I know that God is great, amen. Anybody know that God is great? Amen. The greatest of the Lord.
the greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord.
nothing wrong with allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way. Amen. I, I wouldn't serve a God I couldn't feel sometimes. Amen. Uh, sometimes you got to just look back over your life. And I'm not a pump and prime type of preacher. That's why you need to look over your own life. And you think about all the storms the Lord brought you through. All the trials, all the tribulations. When you felt like giving up, but God stepped in right on time and brought you out of a pit. Why? Because he is great, and he is greatly to be praised. If you believe it, won't you say amen? Amen. amen. We give God the glory this morning for just being God and being God alone. Amen. Amen. It's time for prayer time, and those of you who desire prayer, listen, if you would uh, stand where you are. We're going to cast our cares on the Lord because we know that he cares for us. And we are living in a time that prayer is much needed. And I want to point out something. Uh, there's a familiar passage of scripture found in Second Chronicles. 7 and 14 and it says if my people notice what the Lord said he says if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray we'll just stop with that portion of the verse if my people would humble themselves and pray. There's a lot going on in the world, but the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And those of us that are his people, God will move if we pray. Did y'all catch that? The, the Bible says if my people would humble themselves and pray. We don't even need to dive into the whole verse because we want to emphasize this morning that God's people need to pray. Yes. And just know that when we cast our cares on him, mm -hmm. we know that he hears and answers prayer. So this morning, whatever you're dealing with, there's no better place for it than in the hands of the master. There's a lot going on in the political scene. We know what's going on with uh, the White House and the upcoming election. We're just going to put that in God's hand. There are things going on in our personal lives and our family, bereaved families. We're going to put that in God's hands. And all of us have by now heard the news that uh, Brother Clyde Boatwright Jr. Has, is missing. They, we haven't seen or heard from him. Uh, they found his vehicle in northern Arkansas. Uh, we don't know the outcome. We don't know any details. But what we do know is we're going to put it in God's hands. Yeah. We're interceding for Pastor Boatwright and Sister Boatwright. We're going to put them in God's hands because we know God is able to do all things but fail. And whatever it is that you all are dealing with, we're just going to trust God and let God be God. Amen? Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you once again in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you for all of your many blessings. Then, Heavenly Father, we ask you for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. But, Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And, Lord God, I just want to just begin to just let you know, Father God, that we are still trusting in you regardless of what we're facing in this world in which we live lord god sometimes we get a little weary on this journey but lord you told us that we could whenever we needed you all we had to do was call so lord we come calling on you right now father god asking that you would have mercy on your people lord but then, God, we stand in faith and we stand with boldness 
standing on 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, where you said in your word, if by people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven and heal the land. So, Lord God, we ask for forgiveness of our sins and shortcomings, Lord. Lord, we pray David's psalm in 51, Lord God, with asking that you would create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Then, for Heavenly Father, we would be able to tell transgressors about your love and kindness. So, Father God, we ask right now, Heavenly Father, that you would move by your spirit in this place, Lord God. Lord, we intercede right now for the Boatwright family. Lord, we, we don't know the final word. We don't know the report. What's going on with Reverend Clyde Boatwright, Jr. But, Lord, we know that you know all things. So, Father, we intercede for Pastor Boatwright and Sister Boatwright right now and their entire family. And, Lord, there are others, Heavenly Father, who have loved ones missing, who have loved ones who are sick, who are, are still grieving from the loss of a loved one. But, Lord, we, we just take it all, Lord, and, and put it in your hands, Lord. We pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you would comfort those who are standing in need of your touch right now, Father. Lord God, we pray for those who are sick. They may be in the hospital. They may be in the nursing home. They may be resting in their own home. We pray that you would have mercy on them, Father God. Then there are those, Heavenly Father, that are sick in their minds right now, Father God. We pray that you would touch minds right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. For God, we know that there is no sickness that you cannot heal. Father, there is no storm that you cannot speak to and the storm cease. Lord, there is no situation or no, there is no tribulation, Father God, that you cannot heal and deliver from. So Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, for your name's sake, that you would show yourself strong right now, Lord God. Lord, there's somebody that's on the fence. There's someone that's skeptical. There's someone that doesn't believe that you're able to perform miracles. So, Father God, we pray in Jesus' name that you would show yourself strong right now, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would give peace right now, Father God. Give joy right now, Father God, to those who are under the sound of my voice. Lord, we pray for salvation for those that are lost. We pray that the Holy Spirit would convict hearts and men, women, boys, and girls would come running seeking salvation. Lord, we pray that the gospel would have free course, Heavenly Father. We pray that your word be preached and taught all across the globe, Heavenly Fathers, and sinners come seeking salvation. Lord, we pray for every church assembled in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for greater roles of sharing as a whole, every member, absent and present, Father God. We pray that you would touch them right wherever they are, Lord in the name of Jesus. Then, Heavenly Father, we lift up our politicians right now, Lord God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your will be done in this upcoming election, Father God. Lord, they just can't seem to figure it out, Heavenly Father, but Lord, we know that you know. So, Lord, we're not going to stress about it. We're not going to be anxious about it. We're just going to trust you. You told us in your word to... Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge you, and you will direct thy path. So, Lord, we're just putting it in your hands. Father God, we pray that you would continue to lead your church. Guide us, Father God. Build us up where we're weak and strengthen us where we've been torn down. Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we we thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for clothes on our back, Lord. We thank you for shoes on our feet, Lord. We thank you for food on the table, Lord. We thank you for a roof over our head, Lord. We, we thank you 
for just allowing us to see a new day filled with new mercies. Lord, we thank you that in spite of all things, Lord, you, you blessed us all just, just to see one more day. Lord, we don't know about tomorrow, so we're going to praise you right now, Lord, for this, this day is the day that you have made. Father, we, we pray for those who are lost right now. Father, we pray that the gospel message would prick hearts, Lord, and that that sinner would come seeking salvation. Lord, we pray for those in the South End community, Lord God, those that are walking the streets, those that are on drugs and alcohol. Lord, we pray that you would just move by your spirit, Lord, and just move in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you for everything being as well as it is. We pray once again, Lord, bless every member of Greater Rose of Sharon. We pray that you will continue to lead God and direct, Father. And lastly, Lord, remember me. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen.
Good morning, Greta Rosa Sharon. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm partying today. Because God is good. I don't know. I'm, I'm simply like, you know, I try to have, I don't look out in the audience, but God is good, y'all. You got to just, just be thankful and blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know if y'all saw me moving, but I, this is my first time being here in Arkansas on my birthday in over seven, eight years. And I said, I'm a party with my church, and I'm partying with God. So that's why I'm just a blessing. Woo-hoo! Sorry about that. These are your morning announcements. And I'm Christy Campbell, <laughs> your announcing clerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is an announcement uh, submitted by our pastor, Pastor Cross. The event is the 82nd Congress of Christian Education, Monday, which is tomorrow, July the 22nd through Wednesday, July the 24th, uh, where at St. John Missionary Baptist Church, morning classes start at 8 and evening classes start at 6 p.m. Pastor Cross will preach the Congress Worship Hour message tomorrow at 10 40 a.m all are encouraged to attend thanks pastor cross Amen. this also is another announcement from pastor cross there will be no midweek bible study for the month of july we will resume wednesday august the 7th at 6 p.m online pastor cross south end back to school bash and block party hey Hey, there's a party in the house on August the 3rd. On the thir- uh, 33rd between Chester and Gain. Am I saying it right? This, this is where it's going to be located. Uh, the time will be 10 a.m. through 1 a.m. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a party right there. Because I got 10 a.m. through 1 a.m. I'm like, hey. But no, it's actually 1 p.m. All right. <laughs> and this is uh, information from Sister Cross. Um, these are some additional parts of it. Greater Rosa Sharon will be uh, collaborating with South End Community for a back-to-school bash. Greater Rosa Sharon will hand out paper. Please bring notebook paper. We need all paper donations by July the 31st. We don't want to run out of paper, so please donate as much as possible. If you donate through Giveify, please indicate back to school drive in the memo section or on your envelope. And can't you just visualize that all the other churches and came together and they still handing out stuff and we sit up there and like, you need us to come help y'all hand out stuff? That's just embarrassing. So we're going to make sure Greater Rosa Sharon is going to be representing and bringing out, giving out paper for all the children in the community. Amen? Amen. All right. Greater Rosa Sharon Van Ministry will make one pickup for Sunday school and Sunday morning worship. Please contact Deacon Lee at 501, write this down, 612-9282 to schedule pickup time. Amen. Never know when you might need a ride. Battery might go out. You can still come to church. Amen. 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 So July celebrations here. Um, on the 20th, which was yesterday, Elena, birthday, and so, and then there's, uh, India Green, that's just, uh, Christy's other daughter, birthday is the, today, look how you do that, and I have a birthday twin, which would be me, whose birthday's today, amen, (laughs) and the 24th is Sister Gloria Baldwin's birthday, so there's no up and coming um, anniversaries here. So let us remember the sick, hospitalized, shut in, oppressed, homeless, incarcerated, and those who are less fortunate than us. Let us remember them in visitation, financial giving, but most of all, remember them in our prayers. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge to see if we have any visitors in the house on this blessed July the 24th day. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Well, welcome, you guys. Amen. Anyone else? All right, Pastor, do you have something for 
Amen. I think I'll take it from here. And I'm done. Thank you so much for listening. Govern yourself accordingly. Hey, man. <laughs> thank you, Sister Campbell, for our announcements. Amen. And thank God for our visitors this morning. You could have worshipped anywhere in Arkansas, but you chose to fellowship with us this morning. And we're so glad to have you on today. And for those who may be tuning in for the first time via Facebook, we thank God for you as well. Amen. We just praise God for uh, another opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Just a few announcements to reiterate. Uh, tomorrow will be the first session of the 82nd Congress of Christian Education. It's going to start at 8 o'clock. Classes start at 8 a.m. at St. John. Uh, evening classes will start at 6 p.m. We have a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. If there's anyone who uh, would like to sign up for the courses, uh, we will be registered on tomorrow. So that means that any member that would like to attend, you don't have to pay anything, just show up. Uh, and then tomorrow during the worship hour, uh, I will be delivering the message at 1040 tomorrow morning. Amen. I look forward to seeing some of the members of Greater Rose of Sharon there. And if you can't make it, pray for your pastor. Amen. Amen. Uh, classes will be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just three nights this week. Uh, they also have classes for our youth. Amen. So um, I told my girls, yes, we're going. Amen. Yeah, I got a little blowback from one of them, but that's all right. Okay. So we're all going this week. Amen. So, uh, their uh, the sign-up sheet for the youth classes, uh, if it's not in the fall, you will get that uh, out there to you uh, so you can sign up. Amen. We're two weeks away from the community uh, block party. Uh, Rosa Sharon, we're on for the notebook paper. Uh, let's do our best to contribute. Um, last time I checked, you could get a nice package for 97 cents. Amen. Praise the Lord for less than a dollar. So let's do our part. Uh, we're expecting a high turnout because this is for the South End community. So let's, you know, dig a little deep if we if we can. Uh, we're going to do our part to uh, do, to make it uh, easy on some families to get the supplies for their students as we're getting ready for the school year. So uh, the only thing we're asking is for the notebook paper. Uh, if you would like to make a cash donation. Uh, I'm not sure who, but somebody will go shopping for you. Amen. So uh, we're looking for a good time to help uh, fellowship, uh, be a part of the fellowship on that day. Um, several churches are coming together, so we're going to, we're, we're praying for success. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, we want to be, once again, praying for Pastor and Sister Boatwright. Uh, this has uh, got to be a very difficult time for them. Uh, the Boatwright family is connected to Greater Rose. Amen. We're all, we all family. Uh, so we want to be in prayer for uh, Clyde Jr. Uh, we put it all in God's hands. And we know that he is fully aware of all things. Amen. So we're just going to trust God. Amen. And we'll continue to pray for bereaved families. We're praying for Sister Bobby Smiley. On yesterday, we funeralized her husband. Reverend Smiley, we want to be praying for our members, uh, Sister Harshaw, Sister Juanita Brown, and uh, passing of their brother, uh, uh, my uncle, our family member. Uh, so let's keep everybody in prayer. Um, listen, I may not know your situation or call it out across the pulpit, we, but we all stand in, in the need of prayer. But if there's one thing we know, prayer works. Somebody else say amen. <laughs> uh, prayer works, and if we turn it over to the Lord, in due time, he's going to work it out. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue to worship and move a little high in the worship, and that is worshiping through giving. Amen. And this morning, I don't know about you, but I'm just happy to have something to give. Amen. So this time, we're going to uh, follow the direction of our ushers. Amen.
it's all right to praise him. Because he is excellent. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Because you are excellent in all of the earth. Lord, we thank you for the praise. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for your presence. And Lord, if mankind is going to be saved, the word of God must be preached. So Master, I ask that you would give preaching power from on high. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would sit me down, sit me down and you stand up. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross so that men will see none of me and all of you. Lord, we thank you because you are excellent. And we'll be mind to, mindful to give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank you, Lord. Amen. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise. We We thank God for our musicians and our choir for blessing us, ministering to us through song. Uh, you know, they didn't know that Deacon Palmer was going to read from Psalms 8 this morning. He read about how excellent the Lord is. And then the choir sang about how excellent the Lord is. And the church ought to shout about how excellent the Lord is. Because he is worthy of all praise. Amen. We give all praise and honor to God, the Son who is Jesus the Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our guide. I'm sure you would agree with me when I say it's good to be here. Somebody made plans for July 21st, and the Lord intervened. So those of us who are here, we ought to be thanking God for just another day. And we, we don't know about Monday, but we can thank God for Sunday, amen? Amen. Amen. This morning, I want us to go to the Old Testament, uh, to the book of Job. Watch out. Job chapter number one. And instead of reading the whole chapter, we're going to look at verses 20. 21 and 22, but I will make reference to other verses in, in the chapter. So, Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22, and if you have it, then it'd be known by saying amen. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not 
Noah charged God foolishly. I want to talk this morning about how to deal with God's will. how to deal with God's will. Let's all say amen. amen. We have a tendency to associate anything unpleasant or unfortunate with God's judgment. We feel as if we are being punished for sin in our lives. We feel like if we are in a hard place, it is a result of God being displeased with us. In the Old Testament, when someone uh, got sick, it was it was the customary belief that if you dealt with some type of illness, you are being punished by God. But brothers and sisters, if you're familiar with the story of Job, and we're going to take the time to look at it, hardships and difficult times is not always because you're being punished. Sometimes life happens. And as believers, when we have prayed for a breakthrough, we have prayed for a physical healing, we have prayed for someone in our family, we, we prayed about something and we didn't get the intended result. Sometimes we feel maybe God is upset with me. But church, that is not always the case. You see, when we look at the account of the life of Job, this lets us know that even those who love the Lord, those who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, can still have hard times. Let's look at verse number one. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Verse number one sets the tone, because the text says that Job was perfect and upright. He feared God and eschewed evil. Now, is if we, as we look at what Job endured, verse one could have read. Job was a man that was always up to no good. He never did right. He did not fear God and was always into evil. Now, now, now based on what Job went through, it, it could have been fitting for him to have to endure that if that's what verse 1 said about Job. But the text says that he was a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. So knowing this about Job, you would think that if there was anyone who received the Lord's blessing, if there was anyone who experienced the goodness of God, it would have been Job. And when we look at the story of Job, Job gives us an example of how to truly live 
by faith. Uh, Job's life shows us how to endure suffering and divine sovereignty and still have faith that endures. I can remember my mother when I was a youngster, she would say, Cedric, sometimes you can worry the patience of Job. And as a child, I, I didn't really know what that meant. But then I began to read the Bible for myself and saw how Job endured his trial. Now, we're going to get to it in the text. We're going to get to it, but, but just take an examination of your own life and think about it. Now, you don't have to say amen, but just think about how many times you went off. Think about how many times you shook a finger towards God. Think about how many times you were willing to quit. But when you look at Job's life, matter of fact, well, let's, let's just look at verse number two. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Now, we've already talked about that he was perfect and upright. He feared God. He eschewed evil. And then it says that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So not only did Job fear God, he had a great household and he was said to be the greatest of all the men of the East. Now, all of this tribute that has been paid to Job, something is about to happen. Verse 4, And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone, uh, everyone his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Once again, another key point in the lifestyle of Job. We talked about his personality, we talked about what he had, but now, Job offers sacrifices in prayer for each one of his children. So not only did he live right, not only did he have great wealth and great substance, but he spent time praying for his children just in case they did something that was sinful in the eyesight of God. But then, verse number six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So let's, let's, let's deal with verse 6 right now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It says, the sons of God, the, the host of angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now, uh, as a young man reading this text, I'm visualizing God in his throne and all of the angels. And typically when we see a picture of heaven, they show uh, the blue sky, the clouds, all of the white angels, and it just looks like a, just a majestic and beautiful scene. But then the text says, Satan came also. <laughs> Well, it's not likely that a red man with horns, a tail, and a pitchfork showed up among them. 
Keep in mind that Lucifer was a beautiful angel before the fall. So when he presented himself with the angels, he looked just like them. Y'all ought to feel where I'm headed with this. See, sometimes folks can look the part. They know the language to use, the words to say. But what they look like on the outside is not always what's going on on the inside. When we get to the New Testament, we learn about wolves in sheep's clothing. So to see the boldness of Satan, if, if, if Satan didn't mind intruding into a meeting with the heavenly host and God himself, just know that the enemy will infiltrate your life also. Don't think that you are so saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost that the devil will not attempt to get involved in your affairs. Satan, verse 6, Satan appeared with the sons of God to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan appeared among them. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? In other words, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, and then Satan answered the Lord. Now, let me pause right here, because when you think about the sovereignty of God, it, it, it still blows my mind, as long as I've been a Christian, as long as I've been reading the Bible, it blows my mind that God is so laid back, cool, and collected, he can just sit there and talk to the devil. It seemed like when the devil pre presented himself, God would have done all he could to get rid of the devil. But, but since Satan showed up, God asked him, now what you doing here? And then he just had a dialogue with him. He says, then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. It's still, it's still mind blowing. Satan wasn't even trying to trick God. He just told him, I'm just going to and fro. Trying to find somebody I can deceive. Trying to find somebody I can trick. I'm just looking for somebody to fall for the, for the trap. <laughs> you know, just being straight up with the Lord. And, and it says, now, now here's where the conversation gets interesting. Verse 8 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Lord have mercy. You would think that once God got the word that Satan was looking for someone, he would have stopped it right then and there. But God says, notice now, we're talking about the sovereign God that's in control of all things. Watch what he says. He says, has thou considered my servant Job? Now, somebody would think that would be kind of shady on God's part. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Lord. Wait, you, you mean you suggesting somebody for Satan to torment? You, you, you actually suggesting somebody? He says, hast thou considered my servant Job? But notice what the Lord said. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. So God paid tribute to Job. It is almost as if though God was saying... Satan, okay, I'll tell you what. I got one that I know that he will endure the, the storm. So I, I, I got one that I can trust. So I tell you what, you can go get him. Wow. Wow. Greater Rose, I want you to understand something. Huh. Every storm you have ever endured, 
did not catch God by surprise. Now, I won't go as far as to say that God had a conversation with Satan about you. I, 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 can't, I can't go that far. But what I do know is that nothing, y'all hear me good, uh -huh. nothing gets to you that God did not approve of first. You, you think it was punishment. You think it was a, a trial. You, you think it was devastating, but God authorized it before it happened. And these are the times, brothers and sisters, that we must learn how to deal with God's will. If you think of your own life, think about the darkest place you've ever been in the worst situation you had to endure. Sometimes you have prayed the prayer and asked, Lord, where are you? And if he chose to speak audibly to you, he would say, right here. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed that one. Uh -huh. if, if you would have asked, Lord, where are you? He, if he would speak through an audible voice, you would hear him say, I am right here. Matter of fact, let, let me brag on some of his attributes because, first of all, see, God is omnipotent, right. meaning that he is unlimited in power. Uh -huh. He is also omnip omniscient, right. meaning that he, 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 he is all-knowing. Nothing catches him by surprise. He, he is omnipresent, meaning that he is everywhere at once. Right. Uh, and, and there's another word. Watch this. Don't miss this one. He is inscrutable. Watch this, meaning that he is impossible to understand. Inscrutable. If you've ever wondered why some of the terrible things that happen in the world today, the, the things that we endure in life that you just, you just can't believe that it happened, when you look at the inscrutable God, it's impossible to understand. Because God has a will. And you know what? He does not have to let us know in advance what's going on in our life. See, see, you can watch uh, uh, Tom Brandon on Channel 11, the weatherman, and he can give you a seven-day forecast. He can tell you on Sunday it's going to be a storm Wednesday. And, and with the technology they have, a lot of times they're right. Sometimes the Lord will switch it up on them. But the, but the weatherman can tell you, give you a seven-day forecast of what the weather will be like. The, the weatherman can tell you there's a storm coming. Well, God is not a weatherman. He will not tell you on Sunday that there's a storm coming Wednesday. <laughs> there are things that an all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present, impossible to understand God, there are things that he will allow to happen. Even to those that love him. When you hear God say in verse number eight, he repeats the same thing in verse one about the type of person Job was. But in spite of all of that, he still had to deal with God's will. Job was a prosperous man. His life was based on the goodness of God, not the goods given by God. Job had to endure the trial that the Lord allowed. And you and I, brothers and sisters, we must understand, even though we love the Lord and we know he loves us, sometimes we will find ourselves facing an extremely difficult situation. We just talked last Sunday 
And everybody was happy. We said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Well, listen. All times means just that. All times. So that means that if we find ourselves facing a very difficult challenge in life, we still ought to praise God. Now, Satan, the Lord has recommended Job. But notice what Satan said. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for not? Has thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Something I want you to see in verse 9 and 10. God didn't tell Satan everything Job had. Y'all see that? But what did Satan say? Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased, is increased in the land. So Satan don't know everything, but there's some things he's aware of. And Satan tells God, listen, the reason he fears you the way he does is look at what you did for him. You didn't bless his house. You didn't bless his hand. That's the only reason he obeyed you. But then notice what the Lord said. Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has. And he will, this is Satan talk, verse 11. Verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. See, Satan is the evil one, and he believes because we are frail human beings. He says, if, if you take every, this is Satan talking back to God, if, if you take everything he has, take his substance, he'll curse you to your face. You see, Satan thinks we're as selfish as he is. Uh, Satan thinks we have that type of mentality that if, if we have to take a loss, then, then, then we'll no longer honor God. Uh, uh, Satan says, put forth thine hand now and touch all that he have, and he will curse thee to thy face. Verse 12 says, and the Lord said, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Look at the omnipotent, omnipresent power of God. Satan had to get permission from God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. So everything that the enemy does, God allowed it. I, I want us to understand that. Sometimes our health fails. Sometimes we find ourselves in a financial situation. Sometimes family just can't seem to get on one accord. Some parents are having to deal with wayward children. Some children are having to deal with wayward parents. <laughs> we have all types of things that we are dealing with. And we have a tendency to give Satan the credit. Right. Y'all remember, there's always somebody in the family that you, you know, they, they know about the Lord, they know about church. It's typically one person in the family that would always say, that ain't nothing but the devil. We, we, we got somebody in the family. They say it like that. There ain't nothing but the devil. Well, I beg to differ. Because Satan has no power. Satan has no power. One more time for the folks in the middle. Satan has no power. So don't give him any credit. Anything difficult that you're going through, the Lord 
authorized it, signed off on it, and he says it's all right. And the fact that he suggests to Satan his servant Job, that suggests that even though Satan was going to have a brief amount of time, the Lord still had Job come. Ready to rose? I don't know what storm you're in. But the Lord still got you covered. You may not feel like it. And, and watch this. God's providence over you and your life is not based on your feelings. See, sometimes we feel good. Sometimes we feel strong. But when it comes to God working in your life, it ain't got nothing to do with how you feel. Because there were times where you were so down and out, you wouldn't even pray. You didn't feel his presence, but he still had you covered. So it's not based on our feelings. It is based on his indwelling presence. God is not a man that he should lie. We can stand on his promises, regardless of what's happening around us, Regardless of what's going on in our minds, God is in control of all things. Satan had to get permission from God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. In other words, look, the substance, the house, Everything God, you can, you can you do everything with, but don't touch it. And God's word is authority. He told Satan, don't touch it. You know how a mother is about a child. Hey, look here. You better not, you better not put a hand on it. You know, we, we fight about our kids now. You know, don't, don't touch it. That's, that's what God said. This is, Job is one of God's children. He, he says, everything he has, you, you, it's, it's in thy power, but don't lay a hand on it. And then the text says, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And now that we've learned about the person of Job, the, the devotion of Job, the, the, the God-fearing man that he was, we've heard the conversation, the dialogue between God and Satan, and now the trial. Verse number 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job. Keep in mind, Job has no idea that God and Satan are talking about him. The text says, And there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Now remember in verse 3, it talked about how Job had a very great household. And in verse 15, all of the servants have been slain except for one. Now here Job is, just got the first message of bad news. But then verse 16 says, while he was yet speaking, he just got the bad news. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. There's a one, the first messenger came. He was the only one left. The second messenger came, 
and he was the only one left. That would have been enough to cause Job to break down. But then verse 17 says, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So all of the substance that Job had. Some has been stolen. Some has been burned up. All of the servants that worked in their various areas have all been killed for the exception of one servant. Job is standing with three people. And they all brought bad news. But verse 18 says, while he was yet speaking. It was just bad news after bad news. And it wasn't just some small, petty, insignificant things. Each servant brought a major, devastating report to Job. In verse 18, it says, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell, up, it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Brothers and sisters, each one of us in this room and those watching via Facebook Live, all of us have had a bad day. But your bad day does not compare to Job being told he lost all of his substance, all of his servants been killed. And then the last messenger came and told him that all of his children are dead. Brothers and sisters, we got to be careful about what we complain about. We got to be careful about murmuring about our situation. I wouldn't go as far as to say that your situation was not devastated. But I don't know anyone who has lost everything and nearly everyone in their family all in one day. Keep in mind, this is happening, can, the news is coming consecutively, all in one day. But verse number 20, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. Don't miss this part. Job said, the Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jo Job realized that all that he had, God gave it to him. And then Job turned right around and said, listen, the Lord gave it. And the Lord is the one that took it away. And in all of this, it, it said in verse 20 that after hearing such devastating news, Job fell to the ground and worshipped. Church, how do you deal with God's will? H how do you deal when, when you get the bad news? Sometimes for you and I, if we could put ourselves in, a text, in the text, we typically get that one message. Somebody passed away. Somebody's sick. Somebody got a bad diagnosis. A, a close family member's gone missing. We, we typically get hit with one message, but Job got hit back to back to back to back, and his response was to worship God. And he, he said that all that he had, it was the Lord that gave it to him. And he identified with the fact that it was the Lord that took it away. 
notice what he says in the latter part of verse 21. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. In the midst of everything that he went through, he still blessed the name of Jesus. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. This, this story, and knowing what David said in Psalm 34 and 1, we all have room to grow. Because hearing the bad news that Job heard, some of us would have had a stroke or possibly a heart attack and dropped dead. Yes, we would have been... Devastated here and there, we lost all of our substance. Substance, servants gone. Yes, uh, all of your cattle, your livestock gone. But the news that all of your children gone, it would be one thing to hear one of them passed away. But the servant came and said, all your children are dead. If there was ever time to get angry with God, that would have been the time. Now, I'm not... I can't speak for y'all. I'm speaking for myself. I got six of them. And if I get a phone call and all of them gone, I'm probably going to be gone too. How do, you, how do you handle that type of news? Job, when he got the word, verse 20, the jo then Job arose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Brothers and sisters, Job is showing us how to deal with God's will. There are things that are going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's when. We don't know what the storm will be, but there will come a storm in life. But if we truly love the Lord, and we truly bless his name. When the storm comes, we can take just an example from the life of Job and his losses. When he said it was the Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And verse 22, we all watch this. In all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Verse 22, that there's power in verse 22. Because at this point, he's got all the bad news. He just said that the Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. And the writer says, in all of this, Job sinned not. In other words, he didn't curse God. He did not blaspheme his name. He did not lose hope in him. He, he did not lose faith in him. It says, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Brothers and sisters, when we have to deal with God's will, he is still God. He, he was the one that you gave praise to when everything was good. But he's the same God when things are not so good. He was the one that, that caused you to shout when the, when the miracle came and when, when the blessing came. You, you were shouting. Well, well, when you find yourself in dry places, it's still the same God. I mean, he, he was worthy of all praise over here. But that means he's worthy of praise over here. <laughs> if he was good on Monday, he's still good on Tuesday. If he was good on payday Friday, well, he's good on that off week Friday. If we understand that nothing will be... One thing I, I, I pray we draw from this is that Satan could go no further than the Lord allowed. Y'all remember I gave you that illustration about that mean dog chained up in the backyard. That dog, he, he didn't run a path in the yard. 
He can bark. He can growl. He can do all he want to do. But that dog cannot go any further than the length of the chain. And Satan is just like that old dog. He can do whatever he wants to do within the parameter God has allowed. But Satan cannot go any further than God allowed him. Brothers and sisters, when we trust God and know that he is in control of all things. And we truly understand that he loves us. Then when we face our trial. And it's my prayer that none of us have to deal with anything even close to what Job went through. That's, that's my prayer. I don't want anybody to find out that your house burned down and, and all your stuff's gone and, and, and your children all died. Listen, that, that's devastating news. And I, I personally don't believe the Lord. He, 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 I don't know that he will allow that to happen uh, the way it went for Job. Uh, but he is God. He may. But in the event that he does, Job showed us how to deal with God's will. We're not always going to be smiling. We're not always going to be shouting. We're not naive people. We ain't just shouting all the time. You know, some folks shout all the time. Some folks like to be seen shouting. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes it took everything we had just to get out of bed and press our way. But even on those days, God is still good. And we don't want to paint the picture just because you're a child of God that every day is going to be a bed of roses. There are going to be times when we feel like giving up. There are going to be times when we feel like giving in. But Job shows us that no matter how devastating the storm is, we can worship, we can bless his name, and we do not have to charge God foolishly. Brothers and sisters, you don't know what that person sitting next to you going through. And there are some people who you will never know how intense the storm is because they continue to praise God. They continue to show up on Sunday morning. They still read their Bible. They're still trying to do what is found pleasing in the eyesight of God. They may be pressing their way on the outside, but it's a storm on the inside. But just know that Jesus spoke to a storm. And the storm had to obey. And brothers and sisters, I don't know everyone's situation right now. But what I do know is that with the help of the Lord, we can deal with God's will. Somebody's sick and praying for a healing. Well, go on and pray for it. Because if it's his will, it'll happen. But in the event that he doesn't, he's still God. Somebody praying for that financial breakthrough. You trying to make ends meet. You trying to take care of your family. Listen, you're going through a difficult time. And, and you're praying for the breakthrough. Well, listen, the breakthrough may not come. You may just continue to make ends meet. But he did say, I will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. See, once, once we understand, sometimes we've, uh, we get a little spoiled as Christians. We, 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 we like to hear the preacher pray that he has uh, all, of the, uh, the, all of the gold is mine, all the silver is mine, all the cattle of a thousand hills is mine. We, we like that when we are asking him for something. But there's nothing in the text that says he's going to give you that gold. He said he'll supply you every need. So what we have to understand, church, is that God is ultimately in control of all things. Satan does not have free run over anything. Anything that is happening in your life that's difficult, God had to approve it first. And as soon as God gives the word for Satan to flee, he don't have a choice but to obey. Because in the book of James, the Bible tells us, tells us submit unto the Lord. 
flee at, if you su submit to the Lord. The devil must flee from you. Right. Something that may, not, never, may have never read that. If, if you submit to the Lord, right. Satan don't have a choice but to flee. Some people keep saying, there ain't nobody but the devil. No. God allows things to happen. And if you're, from, if you're not familiar with the story of Job, the end of the book, everything Job lost, God gave it back to him. Twofold. I can't say that what you lost is a guarantee God going to give it back to you. That's not my place to say it. But what I do know is that regardless of the storm, God made a promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So in the worst time of your life, God is with you. We can stand on his word. We can stand on his promise. This story of Job should help us mentally and emotionally deal with the storms of life. Too many believers are losing hope, giving up. Listen, y'all, I don't care how hard it gets. God is still in control of our life. He is not. His love for us will never cease, nor will it diminish. He loved, listen, he loved us before we loved him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When he says, whosoever believeth in him. That means that the condition of him loving us was in place before we believed in him. That means when we were out here just as wild outlaws doing everything we wanted to do, the Lord loved us. And when we came to our senses and called on the Lord, he loved us. He saved us, cleaned us up, filled us with the Holy Spirit, gave us a new walk, gave us a new talk, gave us a new way of thinking because of the indwelling, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Once again, you, you may not feel like God is with you. You may not feel his presence. But we just talked about his attributes. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. We talked about his, his power. He, he, he's inscrutable. It, it's impossible to understand. When, when you go through something devastating, you, God is not obligated to tell you why. If so, we would not need to walk by faith. But regardless of what's happening, just know God is with you. He's never, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. In our diff most difficult day, the Lord is with us. And we have that power because Christ himself was obedient to death, even to death on the cross. He was obedient to the will of the Father. He went to Calvary, and he did not usurp authority. What do I mean by that? Because when they nailed him to the cross, he was not powerless. He chose to be obedient to the Father. <laughs> when they drove the first nail in his hand, he could have waved his hand and made it all stop. But he knew you and I needed a Savior. <laughs> and he hung on that cross from the sixth until the ninth hour. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. He died, but on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hands. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We got to learn how to deal with God's will. Jesus fixed it up for us at Calvary. He didn't say it'd be easy. 
But he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Father, we come now at the close of the sermon. We thank you for reminding us, Heavenly Father, that you do have a will for our lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have kept us uh, even down through the years. We've, we've had many difficulties, Lord. We have many storms and trials and tribulations, but you always brought us through. So, Lord, I pray for that believer who feels like giving up, that person who feels like giving in. Lord, let them know that you, are, that you still love them and that you're in control of all things. Remind us, Heavenly Father, that nothing gets to us that, that you haven't approved of before it makes it to us, Lord. Lord, we thank you because you are worthy of all praise. Father, we just bless your name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. There may be one here this morning who has not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. There are there may be one here who uh, you're already saved and you just kind of been doing your own thing and it's just time to get back in fellowship with God. Uh, you may be having your own Job-like situation and you just need prayer. Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. So whatever it is that you are dealing with today, there's no better place for your problems than in the feet of, at the feet of the master. Amen. As we're standing all over the building, you can come by letter of Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. All the Lord wants you to do is come.